sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And good evening. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It's Sunday the 15th of September 2013. On this week's show, I'm going to be joined by Andy Sutton and Dave Dawn, and we're going to be looking at a few ESIG related news items and probably just having a bit of a natter as well. But we'll start with the titles. Hello everybody. Uh, right, as you can see, I, I wasn't lying. I am joined by, and it's pointing the right direction, sort of there, Andy Sutton. Hello everybody. And down there, Dave Dawn. He says smacking the mic. That was probably quite loud if you were listening. Hello. Um, Good evening. Hello. How are you doing, guys? Very well, I'll thank you. First on, on okay. I, th I, th I think we should say, we'll go super extreme close up to Andy now and say, Hi Andy, what have you been up to? Um, well, you know, just uh, going through lots of swath footage, really, and um, trying to have a bit of a weekend oh. and uh, enjoying <laughs> some fine vapour, really. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mentioned swath. What you up to with swath at the moment? Um, I've got uh, two lots of footage in, um, the, both the uh, Q and A. Um, the one in Brussels and the one in London. So I'm going through that at the moment. Um, and I'm arranging interviews for the coming week, uh, sorting out who's going to go and film those. And um, just generally sort of keeping it ticking along, keeping my eye on the news uh, for any interesting um, stuff that's coming in. And there's quite a lot coming in. That's, that's, um, that's interesting on its own. But I think we're going to cover that in a bit, aren't we? We most certainly can. Mm. Uh, hang on, let me just uh, check the very precise run order that I've written down. Uh, no, <laughs> that's a hotel bill. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're definitely going to cover that in a bit. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Probably sooner than you might think. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dave, let's throw it over to you. How are you doing? Oh, um, recovering from... Uh incipient bum strain from the really horrible seats on the northeast coast real oh jesus honestly they're not built for big lads not by any stretch of the imagination <laughs> but like andy keeping my eyeballs on what's been going on and trying to make sense of it all um and finding myself becoming guardedly optimistic but guardedly optimistic and uh, still a lot to do yet but there's all kinds of stuff that's going to be happening well, it's all look, for, the, for the benefit of those of us that, uh, shall we say, uh, might be a little bit behind on what's been going on in the last couple of weeks, uh, I've done my best to catch up when I can, and but work has been an absolute bitch, to, to, frankly, uh, so I've hardly had any time uh, to, to, to sort of catch up what's been going on, but I've been trying. Uh, I watched a big piece of the VT talk, the really long one you did, I think it was the week before last. Um, and uh, the, the the trip to Brussels and what have you, and, and that, that looked absolutely excellent. I also saw, and I think Andy was referring to this about the Q and A, the uh, the sort yes. of uh, press conference. 
that was done and of course there was the uh, thing on the 10th that I was hoping to make it to myself and, and, and couldn't manage which all looked good just just for the benefit of me as much probably more for me than anybody else that's watching to be honest with you explain what's happened in the last couple of weeks while I've been well, sort of gone okay two two weeks ago um Sav and I shot off to Brussels with with Clive Bates with uh, Doc Farsalinos um Jerry Stimson I mean it's like the A team um with um Jacques Uzek I mean the A team seriously I was Mr T I hear flying um and basically told it how it was and it was an amazing experience to sit there and listen to these experts actually telling everybody what is going on what what ECs actually are and why things can be got so wrong by people trying to do what they perceive to be the right thing um, followed up by this the, the, the presentation um, of the Save ECs campaign letter signed by several thousand people um, and again all of the feedback from all of the MEPs that were down there and MEPs that we met was all generally positive apart from two out and out we're on a Sunday night, aren't we? So I can't swear. Um, we, we got Never a bloody stops me. Well, there was a, there was a couple of uh, a couple of MEPs did the old uh, piss off. I'm not talking to you, Malarkey. Um, that were out and out aunties, and we knew that. And they were they were, you know, holding out for medicinal regulation, probably for all the right reasons, but potentially for the wrong ones as well. Who who were we to surmise? Well, exactly. Um, uh, but that, that all went, I mean, I, I came back feeling quite optimistic from that because uh, EPP, which we know is the uh, the pivotal group, the, the largest of the political groupings in uh, in Europe, um, seemed to be doing a U-turn on where they were. I mean, EPP and the Envy Committee effectively all banded together and said medicines, and yet when it came to the putting back of the plenary to the date it originally was in October. I will not have it said it's a delay because it isn't. It's putting it back where it was. It's reversing the rush. Yes, I uh, picked up on that uh, terminology by McCavern myself, actually. Yeah. Yes, that, that annoyed me intensely. But never mind. All of those, all all of the EPP or the EPP group voted forty-five to thirteen to put it back where it should have been, rather than rush it forward. Which kind of says to me that we've got a lot more support for e-cigs not being a medicine than we had prior to that. Well, I have, to, I have to say, I mean, it, it, it was encouraging to see, wasn't it? Because there's definitely been a momentum and it's been away from uh, common sense and towards steamrolling this through, hasn't it? Mm. And uh, I mean, Andy, uh, I know uh, I'm not sure how many of those events you attended yourself, but I know you've had your cameras there. What was your feeling as you were following this around? Um, I, I, I wasn't there, but um, Andy was there for us. Uh, Andy Marsh, who, who's filming majority of the events, because I too am working at the moment. And that's Andy. Doing... From Andy, that was at Vape Fest, yeah. Yes, that's him. Yes, top and. Definitely yeah, a doing, great, doing a great job and covering everything and watching the footage. Um, there are so many people who are nearly there with this, and the majority that we, we seem to be gaining ground. Um, but when you hear McCavan speaking and the fact that she's you know not not keen on being interviewed for, for Swaff, oh, the one. Um, I wonder what. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it, it. I, I've got, I've got to look at this from two sides. I'm looking at this as a vapor, and so obviously I've been using e-cigs for four years, and um, it's clear to me that the argument's fairly straightforward. Um, it's, it's harm reduction, and it's a safer alternative. We all know that. But looking at it from a filmmaker's point of view, I am keen to get people's opinion who who don't see it that way yeah those th those understand. are the people who are difficult to get for the documentary but are, are are key to have in it because that is the only way that you can have a a rounded yeah you, you you can't just have this an obviously sort of uh partisan bunch of vapors banging on about how wonderful it is 
to, 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 and, to make it a was... credible documentary, you've got to have balance. That I, I see that. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we we were asked um, by Save Sigs to to put together a sort of trailer, a, a sort of a, of the stuff that we've got so far, and somebody i think it i believe it was somebody from the wall street journal said um that that the, the film was very one sided um in terms of uh, the argument now i look at that as well if the people on the other side of the argument all i can say is what what they are saying and get vapors to say that and get experts to say that like clive bates and the multitude of other people that we've got and they're all saying the same thing so yeah. it is now my, my my goal is to try and get somebody on the other side of the argument to come into this and 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 speak their mind and allow us to have a real opportunity to get the story of these sig out and I, I you know it, it's a frustration for me but I I can see that the more people that we talk to are, are quickly can quickly be not converted that's the wrong word but they can see our point of view yeah um so yeah. we we are winning that battle in in converting but like i say th this documentary is, is a difficult thing for me if nobody will <laughs> come on record and and say what what i no i understand I, and speak and, their mind and you know? i watched so it's, it's i watched difficult. the uh, sort of story so far uh yes. sort of a, a roundup that you did if that's the right word for it uh it was about a week ago maybe a bit more and uh and and you could see that you know and and i could see you trying to explain you know i am asking these people but they're scared so exactly uh, so and, and and um i get know, that it gives in, me mixed chat, feelings they're saying, <laughs> they're saying if we do not get their view in the film it would just be labeled as a propaganda film yeah now i i don't want it to be viewed like that um so that is my goal now is is it what well, it has been uh, you know all, but all i can do is document my attempts to get these people involved and yeah. you know if anybody's watching who who doesn't agree with what we're talking about then i i, I invite everybody to to get in touch because that but, it's not the film i'm trying to make there was a there was a bloke called into petri hoskin uh the other day on lbc i was listening to that over the interwebs as you do who is a vapor and who thinks they should be mates but then he thinks he's going to get them on prescription and pay nothing for them and that he's going to get i think something like a Vamo with, oh, I don't know, a Kraken on top or a Cobra or one of yeah. the good bits of kit. I don't think he realises that the way things stand, if it all goes through, there's nothing that you currently recognise that would get a marketing authorization. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that's just, it's not just me saying that. It's been confirmed from a number of different sources. Nothing would get a marketing authorization that we currently know. And I really don't understand current vapors who are queuing up to have them made meds because they think they're going to get them on prescription. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, well, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's been a recurring and, sort of point that we've made in these discussions. Well, since January of this year, really. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I still don't think people get it. And and let's be honest, if you're just watching the news, I mean, uh, the day that you guys were in Brussels, uh, for first news i watched was vapor trials tv but uh the, sadly the vast majority of the british public will have only seen mccavan yes. doing her little bit talking about how this is needed and uh we've got an unnecessary delay in getting it through and uh you know and uh, opposition from the evil tobacco companies you hit on something there dave i just want to mention and i only just sort of caught the headline i think uh during the week there was a story that bat have been guaranteed um, an MA for something. Did you pick up on that one? They've not been guaranteed, but their Vork, uh, which is Nico Ventures um, medical e-cig, which isn't an e-cig. Yeah, this is the thing that's not going to be an e-cig, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's right. It's um, it, it's it's a converted asthma inhaler, and it actually, you know, in in, in terms of what it looks as though it will do it could be it could be very good but the bottom line on it is it isn't an e-cig they're seeking a marketing authorization for it by presentation um the costs of achieving that will inform what other companies would need to do but it isn't an electronic cigarette 
And the fact of the matter is, they are not going to go for a marketing, marketing authorization on the Vibe because they know, because they've been told they won't get one. Yeah. Because the technology does not allow for the kind of criteria that the MHRA is looking for. And that's, that is the bottom line. Um, Dr. Farsalinos looked at the criteria that the MHRA had been putting forward, and he said it was impossible to conform with that with an electronic cigarette using the technology that we know today. And, it's, and, and in my opinion, it's not going to go that much further in the next 18 months, which is what it would have to do in order to be able to attract a marketing authorization. And when I put this to Jeremy Mean, he had no option but to agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the fact of the matter. I've said it a thousand times, and I'm going to keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face. No electronic cigarette, as we understand them now, will ever get a marketing authorization. And Mrs. McAvan needs to understand that, as does every other bloody MEP. There is no way it is effectively a ban. And I, I, I was kind of hoping to keep it a bit lighter tonight, but that's the way it stands. It doesn't well, matter the, what's out there. The, the cynic in me suggests uh, to me that uh, maybe they do understand this, in fact. But uh, hey, who knows for sure, really. Anyway. Well, if you, if you take her at her word, she keeps on saying that they don't want to ban any seats, they do want them there. And I mean, you know, we're talking about people who are almost anti-nicotine and tobacco zealots. They're certainly anti-tobacco zealots. These, listening to what they're saying and talking to some of the, the folks that were anti um, they're desperate to see tobacco eradicated, wiped out. They've got an absolute pure hatred for tobacco companies. And, you know, they can't see the wood for the trees here. Here you have a device that's taken a 60-a-day man that swore blind he would never pack it in. And I haven't lit a fag in four and a half years. Yeah. Why the hell would I want to when I've got something as satisfactory for me as this in my hands? And, you know, they just they can't see they've got a fear to enable them to do exactly what they want to do. Now, in Australia, he said, seamless, seamless. In Australia, <laughs> they're actually looking at potentially banning smokes and making only e-cigs available. But I think you already know that, Dave. Seemly. It is. Yeah. It is. But uh, I just uh, I think uh, that is a fantastic little segue which I'm going to spoil because we're going to take an ad break before we go to it. But hold that thought. Hold that thought. And I just want to uh, just just point out that, uh, you know, McCavern <coughs> could be considered to be a career politician with an irrational hatred of tobacco companies by some people. Who spoiled her career. Alternatively, you could just say that she's a bit of a... And welcome back. Now, uh, just uh, as we were uh, sort of 
catching up on chat there uh, during the break there was a question there uh, from Mark Shaw who, uh, who posed the question that if uh, medical regulation did come in uh, what would that mean for what we refer to today as pharma grade nicotine it's sold for other things as well as electronic cigarettes and uh, I think we'll chuck this one over to Andy for his considered opinion on that um well it's an interesting question um Are you going to it's a difficult or? one to answer because <laughs> uh, the the vendors that that I visited, they're using farmer grade nicotine, you know. So, it it they're they're obviously going to license. I mean, Patch is already licensed, so that uh, <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. I Are mean, you stuck? know, I'm just going to leave the camera on him. Yeah, good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we ambushed him something rotten there. Dave, yeah, you scared the yeah. test on I was watching chat and thinking, ah. I believe that's what's known in the trade as a stitch up. <laughs> yeah, so sorry about that, Andy. Yeah, the, the question was, uh, you know, um uh if if they if medical regulation comes in, uh does that mean that uh, nicotine grade uh, sorry, farmer grade nicotine. Forget me words outright. Um, will, will still be available, I guess, was the question because it's used for things other than e-cigs, and and the ban is obviously supposed to be related to e-cigs. Um, I'm pretty sure that basically it won't be for sale anymore to anybody who hasn't got a license to handle it. I guess that's right. Um, you know, so th th that's where this TPD, although it's full of holes, when it comes to actually stopping us doing what we want to do, it's pretty watertight, isn't it? Well, you see, it depends on the, on the rules in the member state. In the UK, um, the sale of, of nicotine in concentrations up to 75 milligrams per milliliter is perfectly legal. And it used to be legal for pesticides. But of course, there are no legal nicotine pesticides anymore. So the only current outlet for it would be in juice for e -cigs. Of course... If that's outlawed because juice for e cigs would need a marketing authorization in order for it to be sold, then I'm not entirely certain they're going to be able to sell nicotine at that level at all. Um, the whole thing is actually shot so full of holes the boat would sink as soon as look at it. Because as they've currently got nicotine containing products defined, it's all nicotine containing products and there are no exceptions outlined anywhere in the TPD none zero nada zilch yeah, um, yeah. that actually catches tobacco cigarettes yeah Everything. well and and that's that's the bloody uh the, the 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 really ridiculous thing about this whole bloody thing isn't it is while this goes on you know the thing that they're trying to prevent people doing remains freely on sale in petrol stations it's uh it's bizarre Frankly, absolutely yeah. bizarre. There, well, there is, when there the legal there. fight starts, though, if it goes through, then the 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 evidence that that I believe it was totally wicked a couple of weeks ago got that said that um, e cigs can't be classed as medicines. You know that whole thing. You know, it, then the battle changes, doesn't it? It change. You know, because that is their argument that that cigarettes are on the market as well. So. It, it all it all changes again. Well, yeah, and and you know, I mean, that is, it's kind of weird, isn't it? You know, we mm. all do this because we want to stop altogether or cut down on the number of cigarettes we smoke, and <laughs> you know, um, th this this strangely is would be introducing a bit of common sense if they were to try and ban tobacco too. Now, Dave Absolutely. has probably recognised what I did there. Yes, <laughs> that was that was a having, seamless link. That was a seamless link. <laughs> having totally well destroyed or, or exposed the seam on the seamless link previously, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm now going to uh, quickly flick Dave off the screen here because I can do that, and flick over to this thing here, which comes from Channel Nine News, which is uh, from down under, and I if, I might be wrong, but I've got a feeling they had something to do with Home and Away. Which tells Indeed. you a lot, but um, <laughs> you've got to read it in an Australian accent, Dave. Good day, Bruce. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, 
<laughs> and uh, this is this is a story on uh, Channel Nine News's website. Um, uh, and I'll just read out the headline, and then we'll we'll have a little chat about it. Uh, but it's basically uh, the headline is "Trial Replaces Tobacco Smoking with Electronic Cigarettes," which sounds interesting. And it's saying that the former Australian government, who we know were pretty anti-cigarettes, these are the guys that first introduced uh, plain packaging and what have you, um, which, uh, depending on who you speak to, wasn't exactly a resounding success so far. But um, so they were they were conducting a trial to see whether tobacco smoking could be outlawed and replaced with electronic cigarettes. It says, according to a report. Um, I'm not sure it actually goes on to give you too much details of that report. It does mention that, that mention that Coral Gartner, which are part of Gartner, the people who do all the uh, the surveys and industry analysis stuff. So they're a pretty respectable firm. And it's saying a 1,600 person federal federal government funded trial at the University of Queensland Centre for Clinical Research will determine the scheme's viability when completed in 2015. And uh, we'll bring Dave back onto screen. It then goes on to give us details of how they were considering the banning of uh, of tobacco cigarettes. Just ban tobacco outright and give everybody an electronic cigarette instead. Dave, where do you start with that? Well, uh, <laughs> if if you if you start from the viewpoint of some people. Some people would say, what a brilliant idea. Ban tobacco, give everybody e-fags, and everybody will be well happy. Um, but, 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 but... Oh, there's loads of buts. This I is the to... same government that's already banned e-cigs, yes? No, they haven't banned e-cigs. No? They've banned, they've banned nicotine-containing juice. You can buy e-cigs perfectly freely there. You well, just can't get nicotine-containing juice. Well, call it pedantic, but that amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? Well, they they haven't they haven't allowed they haven't stopped the import of nicotine though for personal use. Yeah, but you That's won't right. find an Aussie vendor that can sell it. I understand. No, no, no. 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 Now, if you want to get your nick juice, you got to get on the web and go and buy it from there. Get it brought in and hope that you're not on the television when it comes through in the suitcase. Otherwise, you bug it, Bruce. <laughs> the amber nicture. Bugger in Bruce, and that's raised a... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Amber Nictor, I like that. I like that. Very yeah. Good. yeah. The Amber Nictor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, I mean, but but the you, point remains the same, doesn't it? Uh, let, let, okay, let, uh, they haven't banned these things, but they've done pretty much as much as they dare to discourage people from using them if, if, if they've stopped people selling nicotine e-liquid, yeah? And yet, on the other hand... They're talking about using them as a replacement for tobacco, so I I don't know. Well, this I, I, is this... sorry, Andy, go on. No, I was just going to say, you know, I I can't remember exactly when the ban came in in Australia, but I think it was some years ago, a couple of years ago, eighteen months, mm. something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you know a lot a lot of governments, including um, you know some states in 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 America, they 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 just knee-jerk reaction banned them and well, I, mean, I, 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 I read this i read this as a sort of attempt at a, a, a u-turn based on this million pound research the question is i would be interested you, do, to do you hear think where they that might one be thinking came from do you think they might be thinking they fucked it up a bit oh that's that's a term i think yeah. i mean I've sat, and, I've sat and watched some of the live broadcasts from the australian parliament and it's quite interesting because it's not like UK Parliament in any way, shape or form. You know, you just get somebody stand up and go, you're talking a high lot of crap there, Bruce. I've been eating our snacks for the last 15 years and you can't see an effect on me. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if one of them stood up in Parliament and gone, hold on a minute, I've got 15 mates have been out using these A6 for the last two years. They're not smoking cigarettes at all. Time you wound your bloody necks in and looked at using the damn things for the purpose for which I wish they'd been invented, Bruce. That's probably what's happened. Uh, you, you're probably not far off the truth at all because I've seen Crocodile Dundee. And, and... <laughs> that's not a cigarette, that's an e cigarette. 
Very you good can't go that an AC. The boys on That's bump. a bloody AC, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it strikes to me, it strikes me that the government would have uh, a, a, a much uh, more success helping public health if they killed some of them spiders and crocodiles and things, wouldn't they? <laughs> right. the, the, they the, need the, a the, pesticide. The, I, I, I kind of, <laughs> Nicotine I kind pesticide. Of, <laughs> kind of hope that when it gets to 2015 and they've done this survey, this trial, whatever it is they're doing, that they turn around and say, actually, you know what? We don't even need to ban fags. Let's just make sure everybody can get E6s because it looks pretty good that, you know, if you just let folks get them, they'll move to them because that's actually the truth of the matter, isn't it? Well, well it is really, isn't it? Well, ask, ask yourself, ask yourself, Dave, yeah. did you want to pack in smoking? Did I what, sorry? Did you want to pack in smoking? No, no, that was never the intention with me. Andy? No, no. And if, if, we put it out, if we put it out in the chat and say to the chat, did any of you take up ACs in order to pack in smoke? And I bet the no's outweigh the yeses by loads to one. I reckon you're I probably right. Let's chat. ask them that. In chat. It's... No. It's... No. no. One yes. One yes so far. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, 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 no, no. That's a lot of no's. That's the a no's have it. Nobody wanted a pack in smoke. And now, another question. Oh, they're Ooh. still coming. Oh, there's two. There's two. Three. Three. What was the question? Okay, we've got to the end. <laughs> <laughs> We're not telling you. You'll have to watch the replay. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the yeah. nose have it pretty much. Pay yeah. attention next time. Now, that could, have been, a, that could have been a giveaway. It could have been. <laughs> it could have been. The question is, only if you typed no... Have you? Are you now exclusively on e six? Good yes, question. No. How many of you consider that you have now? No, the, exclusively on e six. That's the phraseology. Look at that. Lots of yeses. Lots of yeses. It's obvious, isn't it? I mean, it's as obvious as the nose on Ed Miliband's face that yeah. people will take e six up just because they're better. You don't need to legislate. You don't need to ban anything. You just make them available and people will use them. There you go. It's just well, interesting. Also, There's a few the numbers of vapours is still going up in Australia despite the nicotine ban. Despite a good good sort of attempt to stop it. Yeah. They're failing mm -hmm. miserably, yeah. yeah. So, again, as, as, as people said in the um, Q&As that I'm going through at the moment, this is user-pushed harm reduction no input from governments no and now the government are going hold on a second it's <laughs> running away from us um just uh just watching people there people saying two years since uh that they've had a cigarette four years three years i saw 18 months and uh oh, I'll, I'll take the camera i'll take the camera for the first time tonight to point something out uh i didn't do a show last week but if i had to done i'd have said i haven't had a cigarette for three years there you go. So there you go. I've said it now. Three years since the last other fact. That was your vapor versity, ver, 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 versary, was exactly. it? Exactly. What wine yes. are you drinking, Andy? Oh, just just some um, cheap rosé. Hang on. Cheap rosé, Cam. Mm. Seems to be working well, mate. It's like Ribena. Yeah. Woohoo! It's like weak Ribena. Um. Mm. Actually, I, I, if, you, if, you, if you can, I would get that GCMS because I think your camel's pregnant. <laughs> yeah, and he's had a good smack in the kidneys as well, by the way, <laughs> <of> things. <laughs> <laughs> ah, enough of this, enough of this. Have we done the Aussie thing? I think we have. Just, I think we've done yeah. the Aussie thing, haven't we? Done Let's go on thing. to da kick Dave off the screen, Cam, and see yeah, what's next. Here's a good one. Oh, that didn't work very well. <laughs> and they could all see that too. Right, here we go. Uh, here's a good one. This one is uh, from the Mail Online, that fantastic ra ra newspaper. Oh, um, fearful for exactly. That I read every day without fail, honest. And uh, th 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 this this is a piece, okay. I mean, and it's kind of, it's fair. And try, try not to look at the stuff down the right hand side of the page if you're watching this. Um, um, I am. Unfortunately, because I'm going to be honest with you here, I got about two thirds of the way through the article before I clicked the one with the bikini. <laughs> and, 
And <laughs> but, uh, but but this is an E6 show, so let's let's talk about the article before we click the thing the bikini again. Um, and the the, the the basic content, the headline is: Tobacco firms spend millions millions on glamorous in inverted commas e-cigarette tv commercials nearly two decades after advertising ban now that, that that's fair enough as a headline um uh, it, the point it's kind of making is that we banned uh the television advertising of tobacco um in the early 1990s it said and uh, and that health experts are concerned about glamorous celebrity images of, of, of e-cigarettes. Um, and I'm just going to make one observation before I chuck it over to the guys to see what they make of this all. But they showed this guy that I'd never heard of, Stephen Dorff. I remember when the thing came out. But this was blue, wasn't it, in the States? Yeah. Did, did, did I want to know why they got that photo of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's uh, Jenny McCarthy. Um, also advertising blue, um, and then they got the e lights, the e lights dancing baby one, which let's face it was worth a watch anyway. I mean that that was worth a few YouTube hits, regardless of what it was promoting. Um, and the the first observation that I had about it is right. This is a British paper, and uh, it's it's showing two ads that have not run in the UK as far as I know. The Jenny McCarthy and the Stephen Dorff one, aren't they? They haven't been shown in, in, in the UK, have they? No, no, no I don't know. So, no, YouTube viral. Um, and the general sort of theme of the thing is that tobacco companies, yeah, they have, remind you of the headline, tobacco firms to spend millions on e-cigarette TV commercials. Um, and then they show uh, two irrelevant ads that were shown only in the US. And then uh, one by Elites, which has got nothing, as far as I know, so far, at least, anything to do with tobacco companies whatsoever. So there's hole number one shot in it. Yes. Um, Big star. Well, yeah, and and but I, I think that was my main sort of feeling. Having read that article, was <clears throat> that it didn't actually leave any scope for anybody else selling e-cigs. It was the big evil big tobacco are going to like sort of renormalize smoking that's what the health experts fear apparently yes and uh yes. bless their cotton socks uh and and actually the only thing that was relevant in the uk was not funded by a tobacco firm anyway mm. but i mean i know you read through it dave and picked some holes in it didn't you oh there's bazillions i mean for instance all tobacco advertising and sponsorship is banned in the uk i'd love to know how they've managed to spend 11 million on it you can't advertise e-cigs, any uh, cigarettes anywhere. Where, where can you? Well, they still do it on Formula One cars, but only nope, in some nope. countries, don't they? No, nope, not even, not even at all. There's no television coverage now of any cigarette advertising in have Formula. They, have they even killed that off as well? Have they? Yeah, that went out four years ago. So you tell me. I don't know. I don't know where the hell they can possibly have spent eleven million quid advertising cigarettes, unless it's point of sale. And I still don't think that a point of sale display showing you what you can buy is actually advertising. I don't understand that in any way, shape, or form. That's the first one. The, the second one is that, aside from it being a direct rip-off of Alex, Alex Ralph's piece in the Times two days ago, um, which was it said pretty much the same. I'm kind of wondering where that's come from and who's actually sprung it off, you know, because it just seems a little bit too coincidental the two very, very similar stories with the same videos and everything else. In well, there's, there's, been... there's, there's two likely sources of that, isn't there? One is the uh, anti-tobacco lobby uh, trying to scare people and the other option could, have been, of course, be the tobacco companies testing the water. Well, either way, let, let me... Tell you where I am on this. It's Dragon's Den, isn't it? Um, I look at it very simply. Bottom line on it is, if E6 carry on unchecked, and please God, I hope they will, within 10 years, apparently, according to the analysts that know about these things, they will surpass tobacco sales. So more than 50% of current smokers will be using electronic cigarettes, at which point in time, tobacco revenues are going to go slowly down the pan. And the tobacco companies know the only way they're going to survive is to get into e-cigs. 
Now, with the proper regulation, i.e. what we've already got in the 17 plus directives that we have to adhere to, and a little bit of tidying up around the edges in terms of what you can and can't put in juice, and that's all it needs, then they'll not be able to do any of the, the, the naughties of which they have been accused over the past God knows how long. It just They won't be able to do that. And that will therefore mean that within 20 years, the number of people smoking lit cigarettes is going to be so vanishingly small, and that will all happen without interference. Now, the tobacco companies know that. They know if they're going to survive, they know if they're going to keep their revenues, they've got to get into e cigs Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a really good point. And what, why? Just before we take uh, our second break of the evening, um, I'm just going to pick up on uh, some discussion that's going on uh, in chat there. Woolly Vaping is saying uh, that some Premier League teams are picking up uh, and doing deals with SkySigs. And, uh, yeah, I believe uh, Sunderland uh, and somebody else, I can't remember who it was, are in with Sky. And I know just down the road from me, uh, Everton, there you go, thank you, Woolly Vaping. And Derby County uh, are uh, promoting uh, E-Lights. And they genuinely yeah, uh, are promoting them. They're handing them to guys. Because I, I don't know when the last time either of you guys went to a football match was, but since the, the, the smoking ban came in, you can't even smoke in the stand anymore. Um, so what they tend to do is open the fire doors uh, and people will go out at half-time for a smoke and what have you. And Also, um, just quickly, on a, on a regional level... Siggy Live in Cardiff, who we covered uh, in an early SWAF video, they've just recently um, got a, a, a sponsorship deal with their local um, team as well. Okay, so listen. that's now renamed the Siggy Football Stadium. Well, so that's it's happening say, across the country. As an advertising opportunity, it really makes sense because people have to pile out of the, 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 uh, the, 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 the stands and and they're just not designed for that. It's not like uh, the, 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 and you can't you can't marshal sort of I don't know how many what percentage of an average football crowd. But you take a Premier League ground and there's going to be thousands of people who, in the space of a few short minutes, need to get outside, have a fight, fagging, and then get back in again. It is an absolute nightmare for the stewards at the grounds to administer. Yeah. But what Derby have been doing, they've been handing out free Elite samples on the way in. So this isn't just about promoting e lights. I bet this is about making it a lot easier to uh, to um, to marshal the crowd, frankly. Uh, well, so, what mm. somebody said in chat as well that if you go to um, a Celtic and Rangers match, I don't know if they are, the Celtic lot get a green tip, the Rangers lot get a blue tip. <laughs> Anybody with a red tip's going to get hurried out, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I must admit, I do like Kat's idea in chat of safer six. Uh, sponsoring a Formula One car and Super Seven driving it. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> I'll go with that. Let's take our second break. Cloud Nine Vaping sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. in Yorkshire for your e-cig needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Pro sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Of 
And welcome back. Now, I'm just going to throw it over to Andy. Uh, we uh, He just wants to add something there on the subject of uh, the uh, tobacco, in inverted commas, advertising. There you go, Andy. Well, it was just a thought that, you know, these. it's easy to call them tobacco firms. And e-cigs clearly are not tobacco firms. We've said that. But in terms of advertising on TV, again, they'll bring the kids into it. You know, it's wide. You know, it, it's ex, ex, showing kids e-cigs, normalising smoking. We've covered that as well. But my point is that when I was a smoker, my kids didn't like it. Now, they are going to see these ads, and they are uh, people who know smokers, who don't want them to smoke, who want them to have a safer alternative. Which, if these advertising uh, adverts are done correctly, then they will be also helping getting the message across and it's getting the wider message out to a, 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 a huge audience on TV so in terms of cancelling or, or applying the same rules to cigarettes to TV advertising I think I, I you know I again we're being painted by the tobacco brush and I've yeah, had a little yeah. bit about that about that this this week as well in terms of requesting interviews you know we are being bundled in with the tobacco lobby and that annoys me <laughs> that's all yeah. i wanted to say really but also i mean i you know the advertising that we've seen online the the stuff that's designed to go viral ha has been quite shock factory you know it's been a bit of swearing and a bit of you know but but if they're done right it will achieve what we all want to happen is to get more people onto e-cigs that's all I wanted to say. End of statement. And I think you said it rather well, frankly. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I, I enjoyed that, did you, Dave? <laughs> I did. I did. I've got visions of, of Aussie e-cig adverts already going out when they've decided to do this. Get yeah, out. Exactly. My name's Bruce. I'm here to tell you about e-cigs. They're all you're going to get, but the same art fucking better than a cigarette. You're not going to suffer. My name's Bruce. <laughs> this is an e-cig. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we probably I can, didn't I have can many... see all those Aussie kids going, Dad, you should get one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we probably don't have many Aussie viewers anyway. <laughs> it's probably just as well. I know I know we've got a few. But, uh, yeah, there's one or two. We've got a few less now. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. We're all upside down to them anyway, aren't we? So yeah, we, we have a special broadcast format for Australia. Yeah. 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 So it's like well, a one, 180 up. degree spin yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the edit. Yeah, it's good use an edit. Anyway, the other man's just said in chat that he's been vaping since before his son was born, so he's going to grow up seeing Vietnamese vape, and that'll be normal to him as he gets older. And I yep. think that's not a bad thing. I think it's a bloody no. good thing, in fact, because if Absolutely. you see your parents doing something safe. Even though you do rebel when you get to the stupid age, yeah, you end up being as safe yourself. I blame that for my delight with lager and lime. That's what my dad drank. Apparently, that was safe. Well, it's hard reduction, isn't it? Mm. Well, apparently, safer than real beer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, right, we we have one more story to cover this evening. So we'll go over to uh, boot Dave off the air cam again. Oh, so, hey. See you, Dave. Ta and um, ooh, ooh, it's all gone. It's all gone to pot. Now this this is uh, a story which uh, Dave you put me onto, uh, which I thank you for. And I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try and pronounce the URL. It's a little bit French, and it's Vercovimi. Yeah, it's just yeah. like flute, like a native. I thought. And, uh, I can smell the garlic. I'm not. I'm not saying a native of where, <laughs> but uh, there's a, this. This is a piece uh, on a blog by uh, a guy called Professor Antoine, and here we go. Every I can watch Dave and Andy looking at me now. What did we decide in the end? Flow. Flower. Flow. Flow. It's like it's, flower without the R. I, I thought it was going to be flowed. Flowed. The but, T is silent. Flow. But uh, we went to the internet flow. and it says it's flow. 
And so the funny thing is, Des, I used to live in France because he's telling me not to go to France. And <laughs> no, it's not Fleur. It's spelled F L A H A U T. So H uh, A A U L T, should I say? Flow. And um, th- this guy, this, this guy's quite a big hitter in the world of tobacco control, isn't he, Dave? He's, uh, he's and they can they the can biggest... see you in the top corner of the screen there. Just sort I've of... just realised yeah, that. Yeah. I the playback. So don't yes. pick your nose during this section. I did in and, the first um... time. <laughs> and uh, he's written a piece here, which has been he's very kindly trans uh, translated into English for us, called "Tobacco Cease or Die." Now, uh, "quit or die" is the expression we use a lot. And um, and it's a really, really well written piece. It talks about uh, the, the the you know uh, cigarettes and how harmful they are, and um, it, it talks the, the irony of uh, allowing a product that kills one in two users that use the product correctly. Well, the, it, there is no other real parallel, is there? Um, you know, and but and there are no instructions. Indeed, and there's no instructions on the packet, so that's that's very true. And to, to use, I've just found that the, the correct piece. He's saying there is no other product legally marketed in the world which kills half of its users when they use it according to the manufacturer's instructions. And uh, he talks about uh, the the guy, the British uh, scientist in the 1950s, who who sort of decided to do some research and and and, and when we started to realize that the, these things were not good for your health um but th- there's a particular uh bit in here which uh which really jumped out at me and he's talking very much about uh, sort of perceived hypocrisy by the world health organization and, and there's a comment in here which says uh remember hiv the world health organization did not recommend to wait for definite evidence of condom effectiveness, which was initially known as a contraceptive device with proved efficacy against bacterial STDs. For obvious precautionary reasons, WHO did not wait for evidence of zero risk for condoms before recommending their use in prevention. There were at that time conservative parties and churches to object against condoms, particularly at the beginning of the pandemic. Their arguments are in part those that we are reading from opponents to electronic cigarettes. Gateway to risky attitude, perpetration of addiction to the risk, bad example to youth. To my knowledge, none mentioned the risk of latex allergy, although it occurred. It did. Always made my really itch. Well, there you go. There's (laughs) there's proof positive. Uh, And no one to call for precaution before releasing condoms on the market for preventing the devastating AIDS pandemic. We see that for electronic cigarettes. Is it a question of era? Maybe today these arguments would have arisen to for condoms. That doesn't half make the point really well. Now, Antoine Flau is the father of the precautionary principle. Let's just call him Antoine so we don't offend him any further. Right. <laughs> probably right. He's the author of the precautionary principle and... I, I talk to him on Twitter quite a lot. And he's told me that the MEPs, Europe, have got the precautionary principle wrong. They should be promoting the use of e cigs in exactly the same way as condoms were promoted. I, I just didn't realise we had so many popes in Europe. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I mean, you're right. I mean, and 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 you say that with a bit of humour, but the 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 analogy, the the, the comparison, um, is just incredible, isn't it? You know, and if you were cynical, which thank God I am, you know, you might think that the fact that the pharmaceutical companies are heavily involved in the production of condoms. But they're not currently heavily involved in the production of electronic cigarettes. May have a bearing in this. It, it's entirely possible, isn't it? Uh, you know, entirely. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I would never be so bold to say that corruption would play any part in WHO policy. No. Who, who funds them again? Um, WHO. Yeah. They're funded by. Uh, let me see. Um, Pfizer, um, GlaxoSmithKline. Uh-huh. They have a very, very heavy, heavy grant from the Wellcome Foundation. Uh-huh. Um, McNeil 
apparently funds them to the tune of billions of euros. Yeah, I, I, I used to work for a company called Novartis. I think they pay quite they, a lot. They have a very, very, yeah, very yeah, high, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. I'm sure that is just a coincidence because they sound ever so like a bunch of pharma companies to me. They do. I'm and pretty slightly. sure the BAT doesn't fund them and I'm pretty sure the JTI doesn't fund them either. And I'm damn sure, just to follow the theme, that Safer Sigs doesn't either. No, Absolutely. I'm pretty sure it does. Absolutely. Mm, yes, well, there you go. Mm. We're in to the last few minutes. So I, I say we throw it over to the floor. We've got, uh, I'd say, about three and a half minutes of uh, broadcast time left this evening. So if anybody in chat has got anything that they'd like to put to the panel, shout it out now. And while you're having a think about that, I'm going to explain what's going to happen over the next few weeks. And in a nutshell, I'm not going to be here. Um, now, whilst that's going to really, really cut me up, the... Uh, I think you'll agree that they are good legitimate reasons to not be here. Uh, next Sunday, for example, I'll be just arriving in my hotel in Munich, uh, where the following morning I'll be taking breakfast with a few very select friends at the Oktoberfest. Uh, so white sausage, pretzels and beer, basically, for breakfast is the way it starts. And it's six. Uh, yeah, and it's six, of course. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think I'll be the only one. Uh, my old boss, who I haven't seen since I was working in Munich, he's a smoker. I did give him an e-cig once. It'll be interesting to see if he's still using it. And um, then in two weeks' time, I'm off to Malaysia for my holiday. And I'll be gone for two weeks. So you won't see me for a month, basically. 14th of October, I'll be coming back. No, 13th of October, I'll be doing a show. That's right. That's right. So it's the best part of a month. And, uh, yeah, it'll be good. And I, I made an appeal on my last show uh, for tips. And, and, and I'm going to give a shout-out here to Jack Tan. Do you remember Jack Tan? When we used to get 20 viewers when we used to start. Yes. And Jack Tan, he's Malaysian. He is. And there was me thinking, if there's anybody there who's been to Malaysia, and Jack Tan, he got hold of me through Facebook in the end, he said, duh. I'm in Malaysia, <laughs> and he's given me some very good tips. So although I won't be taking the camera with me to Malaysia, I may very well be filming some before and after uh, on the preparations I will be taking, because, of course, e-cigs are illegal over there. So, uh, but we, have some, we have some questions from chat, if we just want to quickly rattle through those. Let's go for it. Um, mostly they're related to the SWAF project, so I'll just quickly deal with those, but there is one that's uh, open to us all. Um, has any... Uh, okay, I'll do that one last. Uh, Andy, is your documentary going to be aired on terrestrial TV? Well, at the moment, it's hope so, but uh, not in the form that we're putting up on YouTube. It'll be um, a, a larger form thing, but I'm in talks with several different people about that. Um, Good. Uh, he says, uh, right. Andy, uh, those those that did the video booth, where we where can we see the results? Some of them are in the um, story so far video, but there is another video coming soon um, with uh, that's just vape fest footage. And um, uh, to the rest of the team, all three of us, uh, what do you think the odds are that e-cigs will be medicinalised? And has anybody tried contacting the BBC, Panorama or Channel 4 dispatches to see if they do a programme on the TPD? <laughs> um, I said that very well, without drawing it, breath. It is, like he was, he was talking over a video. Um, where are we at? I, 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 my feeling is that at the end of the day, e-cigs won't be medicines. At the end of the day. But... I have been warned by one or two MEPs. This could take three to ten years. Yeah, and, and, and you know, just to throw my two pennies in there, I honestly do not know. I'm more encouraged than I was that, that we might win the day, but I honestly do not know. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly not relaxing and no. uh, I'm being complacent. And let well, me just add to that as well. Whatever's going to happen, whether, you know, the, from, the, from the point that if it is medicinalised and we've got three years until they go away, my intention is to try and keep filming and continue to tell the story of the electronic cigarette no matter which way it turns right i've got to wrap up and i've got to read this out because cat has just posted in chat and she's dead right i forgot to mention what will be replacing me while i'm not here and uh, there will be team talk uh which i know everybody's been enjoying uh through these chaotic last couple of months and they have been quite chaotic haven't they 
Mm. Um, and uh, so Team Talk will be shown in place of Dave's Tackle Box for the next few weeks. So enjoy that. Oh, if I can get an internet connection. Oh, did, did they have the internet? They must have because Jack Tam watches us. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to try and watch it. Uh, but and the SWAF cameras will be at Fest Island. I've just had a question about that as well. Are there you going on? Right. Yeah. We're well, done. We've got to go. Thank you very much to my guests, Andy Sutton. Bye. Dave Dawn. Ta ta. Thank you for watching and good night.